Hi guys, Dr. Douglas Tillard here. Thanks for coming over to watch another video. Special shout out to my cervical coaching clients. Thanks guys for coming over here to do your homework. Much appreciated. What are we going to do today? Today we're going to be testing four muscle groups of the upper extremities in attempts to find weakness. Muscle weakness is what we're looking for today. Why do I care about muscle weakness? Because the nerves that come out of your neck go down your shoulder, go down into your arms, those nerves plug in to these four muscle groups and give them power. If the nerve is damaged inside your neck from things like a cervical disc herniation or central stenosis or lateral stenosis and the damage is significant, you're going to have weakness in that muscle group. The nerve's not going to be able to do its job and that is not a good thing. That's going to influence my treatment suggestions for your unique situation. So please do this carefully. All right, now before we get started, disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. I'm not forming a doctor-patient relationship with you uh, by showing you how to do this stuff. Also, if you have shoulder problems, elbow problems, or wrist problems, don't do this testing. You're going to get hurt. I don't want anybody to get hurt, right? If you're one of my coaching clients and you have a bad shoulder, just send me an email and I'll tell you how we're going to deal with this. All right. Um, and last but not least, you're going to need another person to do the testing. So go find your significant other or whoever is around and get recruit them over here to do this testing. All right. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to start with the C5 nerve. The C5 nerve plugs into the deltoid muscle. That's the muscle right here in your shoulder. When that muscle contracts, your shoulder goes up, kind of like a bird flapping like this. Okay, so that's abducting your shoulder. So abduct your shoulder to about 90 degrees. Don't go way up here. There's no sense of going that high. Right about here. Your tester is going to come in and gently start to push down. You're going to use 5% power, 10, 20, 30. You're going to slowly ramp up the power. You're not going to come in and slam this thing down full power. You're going to hurt whoever you're testing like that. You gently ramp up the power. Have a little tug of war and get an idea of how strong it is. This is not a 100% effort. They just have to have fairly good strength. And they're probably going to, if they're right-handed, they're probably going to be a little stronger on the right side. Then test the other side, get an idea of how strong they are there. We're looking for significant weakness. So significant weakness would be like this. Okay, the coaching client add AB ducks. You push down five, 10, 15. Oh my gosh, there's no power here. It's going to be really obvious that they don't have power to you pushing down. Some people might be so bad they can't even do this against gravity. Write that stuff down. We need to discuss that. And then you test the other side and they're, they're super, super strong. Okay, That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. Let's go on and do the C6 nerve. C6 nerve cocks the wrist back like that. It plugs into these posterior wrist extensor muscles and it cocks the wrist or it extends the wrist backwards. So extend the wrist, hold it strong. Uh, you can do this on the table to support your wrist. I can't really show it with the cameras. I'm not going to adjust those here, but just imagine this is the table. Cock your wrist back. The examiner is going to come in, grab the back of the knuckles here and pull this way. Try to uncock the wrist. Again, I'm looking for significant weakness, like there's no power here. You can easily pull down the wrist. That's not good. You test the other wrist and they're super, super strong. Okay, write that down in the pre-coaching session questions. Uh, now we're going to C7. So you can do that on the table. Again, I can't really show you here. Just pretend the table, this is kind of a vertical view. Flex the wrist like this. The table is supporting the back of the forearm and the examiner would be on the other side pulling, but the line of force is this way. You want to try to uncock the wrist. Okay, again, you're looking for super strong on this side. They flex the wrist on this side. You push and it just has no power. It just completely caves right in. Write that down. That's significant. Last but not least, let's test the C8 nerve root that plugs into the muscles in your hand that pinch your fingers together. Those are the interosseous muscles. So pinch your fingers together, hold strong. Tester is going to try to unpinch them. 
Okay, that's called a deduction, adduction. So the examiner is going to try to abduct the fingers. So pinch, hold strong, examiner, unpinch them. Get an idea of how what the strength is here. Okay, now let me see if I can coax my wife into coming over here and acting as a real patient for us so you can see what this looks like on a real person. Okay, Dr. Gillard here again with Lydia. Say hello, Hi. Lydia. Okay, let's do the muscle testing. This is exactly what I want you to do. C5, that's your deltoid. That raises the arm up. Have the patient hold it there. I'm going to push down. Remember, if you have a shoulder problem, don't do this. Even if you don't have a shoulder problem, don't jam down really hard. Just slowly build up the pressure more and more and more. You don't want to jolt those tendons and injure the tendons. She's got really good power there in this deltoid. C5 is looking good on the right. Let's test it on the left. Push down, ramp up the, prow, ramp up the power. She's got good power here as well. Okay, let's go to C6. C6 cocks the wrist back like that. There's a couple ways you can do it, but her wrist, you can see her wrist is cocked backwards. I need to push that way to see if we can uncock it. So I'm pushing that way. She's very strong in that direction as well. Okay, cock the wrist. Okay, I'm going to push. I'm pushing that way, trying to unbend her wrist or uncock her wrist. She's got great power. Um, so uh, C6 is great. C7 is wrist flexion. So let's see how we can get this for the camera. Um, I guess we just have to go like that. Okay, hold it just like that. I'm going to push right at the camera, and her wrist is not budging at all. It's stayed in that flex position, so that's great. Seven is looking great on that side, and let's try this side as well. Really, really strong. Great. And last but not least, let's do C8. So those are the, so open your fingers and pinch the fingers together. Those are the interosseous muscles for C8. I'm just going to try to pull apart. She's super strong. Let's go on this side. Let's try to pull them apart. She's really good. So she, neurolog at least motor-wise, she is intact. And that's all I want to know. Okay, guys, thanks again for coming over here to do the testing. Now, coaching clients, make sure you write this information down in the pre-coaching session questions. We're definitely going to be discussing this uh, in a week or two during our Zoom consultation. Plug for my coaching session business. If you would like to speak with me about your chronic neck pain or back pain or your chronic weakness in your upper extremities or in your lower extremities or your headaches, send me a quick email. Keep it short. Just describe what's going on and I will respond within 24 to 48 hours. And whether or not I think you're a good candidate for the coaching session, I'll explain uh, what the next steps are. In fact, I'll put a link to a video down below I just made that completely explains this coaching session of mine um, so you can get more details if you want. Now, if you're not one of my coaching clients and you discovered weakness, you need to report this to your primary health care provider immediately because there's other things that can cause upper extremity weakness beside the run-of-the-mill cervical disc herniation, central stenosis, or lateral stenosis. Maybe you injured your brachial plexus and you have a plexopathy. Maybe you have a lung tumor called a pancos tumor and it's pushing into the brachial plexus. That can cause weakness. These are rare, but they can happen. Maybe you injured your ulnar nerve here at the elbow and you have an ulnar nerve neuropathy, that can affect your wrist power. Maybe you injured the carpal tunnel here and you have a median nerve neuropathy. Um, that can do it. And then some more sinister conditions. Uh, maybe you have multiple sclerosis that's starting. Maybe you have Lyme's disease, ascending myelitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, pernicious anemia from a B12 deficiency. Uh, so there's a lot of things that can cause weakness, and that's why you got to get this checked out by your primary health care provider. Okay, guys, thanks again for coming over and watching the video. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, and we will see you in the next one.